Hey, what's going on guys? Sean here, living the corporate pilot life. I'm here hanging out with one of my hawkers right now. Got a little Tech Tuesday video for you guys. It's been a while since I've had a Tech Tuesday video, so I'm trying to get back on track. It's been slow, but I will get there. The new director of operations position has been taking up some time, but I'm, I'm getting organized, I'm getting there. So hopefully we can get back to a routine of getting these out. Uh, one question I've had from you guys uh, here lately is what are these things here behind me? Um, this right here is, a, is called the pitot tube. It's spelled P-I-T-O-T, -T, but the last T is silent. Pedo tube, get it right guys. Uh, and this right here is our angle of attack vane. Uh, this is what tells us the angle of attack of the airplane. If you wanna get into aerodynamics, you can go Google angle of attack, but it's basically the angle between the, uh, the angle of incidence between the, the wing and the, uh, the air uh, relative wind to get real technical on you guys. But, uh, but yeah, that's what tells us that. And it basically tells us if we're getting close to stalling the airplane, uh, which is a bad thing. So yeah, let me uh, show you guys these things up close and uh, what they look like and what they do. So this is the pitot tube, like I said, uh, and if you notice, there's a, a hole right there in the middle of it on the front, and that's where the air goes running into as we're flying. Forces air into there, and it tells us how fast we're going. That gives us our uh, indicated airspeed, so uh, it, it reads out on the uh, airspeed indicator inside the cockpit. Uh, and the airspeed indicator actually uses two instruments or two uh, uh, references to give us that, uh, that reading. That's the main one, but then we also have another one up here. It's called the static port. It's this guy right here, and you see these two little holes, and notice as the air goes by those, uh, it, will, it will tell you the actual air pressure outside the airplane. As you guys probably know, as you climb up, you're gonna lose pressure uh, from the atmosphere, uh, you know, less barometric pressure as you climb up. So without that, this one would be very unreliable as you were to climb up. So it basically uses both of them to tell you your airspeed as you're climbing up. Now, one problem that you uh, typically see on pitot tubes and static ports for that matter, is you're gonna get some ice buildup. So if you can imagine, you're flying along, let's just make something up 250 knots, say. So you've got 250 knots worth of wind pushing into the front of this thing, and you were to get some ice built up on here. Now, the tube between here and all the way inside is sealed up. So if you can imagine, this thing gets frozen up, you can't get any, air, any more air in or out. So if you change airspeed, it's not gonna know it. You're just gonna hold 250 knots indefinitely uh, until you change altitude. When you change altitude, the pressure up here is gonna change, so it's actually gonna read more like an altimeter. That stays sealed, this uh, changes, and you're gonna change, your airspeed indicator will change. So you'll think you're changing airspeed, but actually you're just changing altitude. So to prevent that from ever happening, this bad boy is heated. As you can see, the front of it kind of shows some heat marks on it. Um, that's pretty normal. Um, it, uh, it basically gets very hot as you can see right here. So uh, it prevents any ice from building up. On some airplanes, some smaller airplanes, Cessnas and such, they're usually heated as well, but they're not heated all the time. We turn this thing on as soon as we start the engines, it stays heated, we don't really have to worry about it unless it fails. And if that happens, of course, we're gonna have problems, but we do get indications in the cockpit. Same thing up here, this plate gets heated, so if you touch that, it's gonna be really hot. So what we do is when we pull the airplane in, when we're parking the airplane after landing, we turn those off and they cool off fairly quickly. So by the time you get out of the airplane, nothing really to worry about. Um, and then same thing here, this bad boy, the vane is gonna uh, rotate with the wind. If you're going straight, it's gonna look like that. Uh, if the airplane goes to a, a really high pitch attitude, it's gonna go like that. If you can imagine the nose of the airplane goes up, the, uh, uh, the vane is gonna tilt that way and it's gonna read accordingly in the, uh, in the airplane on the instrument. The uh, instruments are all turned off inside, so I can't really show you them directly, but I can show you the uh, angle of attack indicator on the inside since it's an analog gauge. So we'll go inside and I'll show you that real quick. All right, so we're in the cockpit. As you can see my reflection over there. Hi, Sean. Uh, we are in the cockpit. There's our ram's horn uh, yoke. And way over here on the left side, kind of in front of the pilot's knee, you will see the angle of attack indicator. Right now it's pointing straight up because all the electrics are turned off, but if you were to turn all the electrics on and go out there and turn that wind, that, uh, that vein, that needle is pointing straight up, it would turn down here accordingly. So typically you wanna keep it out of that yellow and that red area. If you get it up into there, that's bad things happen, that's when you're gonna to start to stall. Usually in cruise, we're gonna be down here in the 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3 range, something like that. And that's usually gonna be your best fuel economy as well. Keep in mind, as you pitch the airplane up, you get more drag on the wings, thus uh, less fuel economy. So you wanna keep that, that airplane, the, the wing going straight through the air or close to it. It reduces the, uh, um, the angle of attack, reduces the uh, uh, drag on the airplane, and then you get better fuel economy. So that's what we like to do whenever possible. So like I said, around 0 0.2, 0 0.25, something like that's a good number to be at. 
So back on the outside of the airplane here, one last thing we do, anytime we park the airplane, we always try to cover these uh, probes as much as possible to keep bugs from getting in them, dust, dirt, all these things can clog up these ports and become an issue. Um, I had an issue years ago on a G4 where we had some bugs blocking one of those tubes and it caused major avionics problems. So what we do is we try and cover them. Um, I've got some little covers right here. I'll show you how these go on real fast up here on the static port. So there it is. It's basically like a little golf tee. You plug it into that hole right there and it covers that all up. Now back here on the pitot tube, we have a different little cover. We have this guy right here, kind of like a little, little envelope. If I can do this single-handed, it's a little bit of a trick. But you can see that covers it all up. And then back here, goes just like that to hold the vein in place so it's not bouncing all over the place. Keeps everything out of there. Obviously, if something really wanted to crawl up inside there, it would be able to, but it does a pretty good job keeping everything off of there. And when it rains real hard, nothing, you know, the rain doesn't build up inside there. So yeah, that's about it. We uh, keep these things in really good condition for a very good reason. Safety is always number one with us. So, you know, these things are very important. So hopefully you guys learned a little something about the uh, pitot tube, pitot static system of these airplanes, the angle of attack system. Give me that thumbs up if you liked it, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next Tech Tuesday video. See ya.